Welcome to Aquaculture Engineering. This is the first lecture of the course. We are first going to go through the definitions and uh, in and uh, the general overview of aquaculture and the engineering applications that we will uh, be involving in. Uh, in this lecture, we first go through the uh, definitions of terms. The Philippines is both uh, tropical and archipelagic, which means water is abundant year-round and very much accessible in the coastal regions. Uh, this makes the country teeming with biological resources that come with this boon of water. The country is also in the path of migratory uh, aquatic species that traverse their migration routes uh, annually. Yet in the subject, we're not to deal with uh, capture fisheries, which is distinct and separate from uh, uh, aquaculture. Culture is synonymous to both domest domest domestication and cultivation. Thus, we begin the course with some definitions and in the next lecture, the overview of aquaculture and the appropriate engineering applications we can pursue. We take the first definitions of aquaculture from uh, varied sources. The main textbook of the course defines it as the science and technology of producing aquatic plants and animals. The World Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, defines it as the manipulation of at least one stage of the life cycle of an aquatic organism to increase its production and yield. The government, through uh, Republic Act, or RA 8550, uh, otherwise titled as the uh, Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998, define it as a fishery operations involving all forms of raising and culturing of fish and other fishery species in fresh, brackish, and marine water areas. Let us highlight the commonalities. Raising or growing for production of aquatic organisms, such as shellfish, crustacean, aquatic plants, and others, in their natural and or controlled freshwater estuarine or brackish and marine water environments. We now improve our definition so that we have only one by restating it. Aquaculture is the raising or farming of aquatic organisms of economic value in their natural or controlled marine, estuarine, or freshwater environments. There are technically three types of, of or, or systems of aquaculture. We have monoculture, polyculture, and integrated farming. In a monoculture, only a single species is reared in a given culture unit, such as a pond, raceway, tank, or some other culture chamber. The classic examples of monoculture are shrimp farming, tilapia production, and milkfish production. Polyculture is the, uh, from, the word, from the root word poly means that there are now two or more species usually of different food habits. This is to avoid competition so that the wastes of one species can be the nutrition for the other species and so on. Uh, if you are fond of an aquarium as a child, recall the janitor fish eating the excreta of the goldfish in your aquarium. If you have not seen a janitor fish, just imagine it at the bottom of the aquarium uh, with its underbelly always touching the bottom of the aquarium and its siphons or sucks the bee, like the fallen uh, fish food and excreta for nutrition. Polyculture also means integrating an or the aquatic species to 
agricultural production. Uh, the same uh, waste from one activity is used as input in another system activity. Polyculture is also the collocation of a pelagic or and a another demersal species. Uh, pelagic species occupy the upper uh, layers of the aquatic environment, while the demersal species, like the janitor fish, occupy the bottom of the environment. Uh, examples of this would be the culture of scallops, uh, sea, sea cucumber, and algae. Also, the culture of tilapia, with carp, and catfish. Also, the culture of milkfish and lobster. And lastly, the culture of milkfish and the Mozambicus species of tilapia. In integrated farming, which is a cut above polyculture, the combination of practices optimizing biomass production of the whole uh, aquaculture system while maintaining ecological harmony is the objective. So unlike polyculture, the combination in an integrated farming setup is two or more farming systems. Thus the setup of rice and fish farming, horticulture and fish farming, and even livestock and fish farming. Now, there are different uh, aquaculture systems because there may be different uh, needs, expertise, budget of the owner operator of an aquaculture setup. Uh, let us segue then to the disadvantages of each system since we have defined and outlined uh, their differences. In table one, we have the monoculture having the disadvantage of untapped or unutilized byproducts or wastes. Uh, in both polyculture and integrated farming, there is a need for training and some window of uh, experience in culture techniques can be complicated uh, with the system requiring skills to operate. In a polyculture also, uh, the different species require uh, different species require uh, different feeding rates and also the, the need for cropping and sorting during harvest. Besides different aquaculture systems, the degrees of intensities of an aquaculture practice varies. There are three intensities, namely extensive, semi-intensive, and intensive. With extensive, eggs and larvae are uh, reared in a hatchery before they're released into the natural habitat, either in pens or free to be caught at a later date. In extensive aquaculture, organisms are kept in relatively low densities as, it's as dictated by the carrying capacity of the environment, which is the natural uh, aquatic ecosystem. Uh, hence, the farmer has very little inputs and modifications to the system. Uh, one keyword to the limit uh, on an extensive aquaculture setup is carrying capacity. Uh, now, this is the uh, uh, optimum or maximum uh, population size of a biological species that can be sustained in a specific environment, uh, given its available food, um, water, uh, habitat, and other resources. For semi-intensive, unlike extensive, there is now supplementary feeding, but the qualifier limited. The limited supplemental feeding now allows moderate stocking density and thus has a corresponding production cost. Compared to extensive aquaculture, semi-intensive is expected to have higher production output both in quantity and biomass. Uh, the manure-based culture option of semi-intensive and aquaculture rely mainly on natural fish food uh, produced in the pond. Uh, last, aquaculture intensity is intensive where there is a complete rearing of species from young to adult 
in high densities and usually conducted in raceways, tanks, silos, and uh, cages. The controlled uh, rearing requires uh, supplemental nutrition to avoid uh, starvation and antibiotics to prevent diseases. Uh, due to overstocking, other types of control and monitoring of the system is is uh, recommended or usually done. For one, uh, the biological oxygen in the water is improved with aerators. Let us now proceed to the ecological classification of organisms in aquatic environments. This would just be a review of our biology. We have figure one, identifying the orders of organisms in the food chain or web, uh, beginning from the decomposers, bacteria and detritivores at the bottom, to the primary producers above it, the herbivores that feed on the primary producers. Then there are the planktivores which eat the planktons and are secondary consumers. Last are the uh, piscivores which eat other fishes. Figure one can be further simplified with the autotroph, uh, heterotroph classification. Autotrophs uh, produce or manufacture their own food. They can mo metabolize with their uh, organelles or organs, food from inorganic sources. They can metabolize uh, because their organs uh, are capable of doing so. Autotrophs can be photoautotrophs or chemo Autotrophs. The suffix uh, should differentiate between the two, uh, the photo relating to light and chemo relating to chemicals. Uh, heterotrophs, on the other hand, cannot synthesize their own food and so must uh, obtain it from an organic source. And in the process of doing so, must decompose uh, complex chemical uh, compounds to obtain both, uh, yeah, decompose them to simpler ones to obtain both energy and nutrition. The heterotroph subclassifications we have already given. Highlighted here are the omnivores, uh, scavengers and decomposers. The omnivores can eat both plants and animals. Scavengers eat dead plants and animals. Decomposers like bacteria and detritivores uh, feed by breaking down dead plants or animals. Ecological classification can be also done according to environmental tolerances. Later, when we tackle ecosystems, uh, these variations will be highlighted. Typically, though, there are two tolerances, uh, narrow or broad tolerant. The example would be uh, uh, stenothermal and urethermal to indicate narrow and broad tolerances relating to temperature. We have the su suffix uh, steno for narrow tolerant and uri for broad tolerant. It, uh, the same uh, suffixes can be used with salinity and other parameters. Uh, ecological classification according to location can either be benthic, pelagic, or planktonic. Benthic are bottom de dwellers or ground fishes such as the janitor fish. The janitor fish is actually a species of catfish. The pelagic are free swimmers like tuna and grouper. Uh, the planktonic are those that depend on the water currents. So if you know someone who goes with the flow, call him or her planktonic. Now let us go to the uh, three aquatic ecosystems which I would surmise to be just a review of your biomes. All three aquatic ecosystems, which I uh, are of concern in uh, aquaculture, because well, uh, pens and cages can be set up in uh, open seas, which is being done in bays such as Manila Bay, the Lagunoy and Albay Gulfs. The neritic zones of these bays are high in nutrition due to increased biological, biological activity as you will see later, an ecosystem is a community of living organisms in conjunction with the abiotic environment 
and the, uh, the interactions of nutrients and energy cycles in between forming a uh, system. Uh, a different ecosystem would mean a different set of organisms thriving in a different environment. Uh, completing the ecosystem are the nutrient. Uh, and energy cycles. The aquatic ecosystem should form the basis for the environment in which the culture species uh, shall be successfully grown. While some species can, uh, species can survive in all uh, three ecosystems, most can do so with only the right intervention because technically uh, the ecosystem should demarcate or limit the bounds of the survival of an organism. An organism needs acclimatization to move from one ecosystem to another. Uh, let us differentiate the three aquatic ecosystems beginning with the freshwater ecosystem. A freshwater ecosystem has low concentrations of dissolved salts and other the total dissolved solids and thus includes standing or land thick water bodies such as natural lakes, ponds and impoundments, and flowing or lotic such as streams. The picture in figure 2 depicts the arrangement of the three aquatic ecosystems. The arrow points to a stream that opens to an estuary the next aqua, uh, aquatic ecosystem. An estuary is a body of water in which fresh water from, an stream, from a stream or streams mixes with uh, salt water from an ocean and topographically are drowned river mouths. Uh, estuaries have uh, extreme fluctuations in salinity, turbidity, uh, saltation, and tidal and stream current uh, turbulence, and consists often of sand, uh, sand, silt, and clay. Uh, despite these conditions, uh, estuaries have high biological activity and productivity. The arrow in the picture points to the estuary for the uh, given um, river ocean system. The marine ecosystem are oceans and seas. They are uh, moving and changing ecosystems with a large variety of biotopes. A biotope is a uh, region of habitat uh, associated with a particular uh, ecological community. Remember your uh, ecological classifications. The habitat is an area of uniform environmental conditions providing a living place for a specific assemblage of uh, plants and animals. Each biotope differs according to geology, substrate, uh, depth, currents, and uh, nutrients. Thus, a marine ecosystem would have varying salinity, uh, dissolved gases, light temperatures, and sound, and habitation. The arrow points to where the marine ecosystem just begins and expands further out into the open uh, ocean. Let us further look into the divisions of the uh, marine ecosystem. Uh, the pelagic zones or environment uh, refers to the open ocean or sea, excluding the coast. It is divided into the neuritic and uh, oceanic zones. The neuritic zone is well lighted but has seasonal variations in light as well as temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, nutrients, wave action, currents, and its biota. A biota is the living organisms, okay, the flora and the fauna. It is the richest uh, in varieties of biotopes and thus has fish of greatest abundance. The oceanic zone is less productive than the neuritic zone, but there is little seasonal variations in temperature. Water chemistry and other environmental factors, okay, uh, the depth of the pelagic is subdivided into the epipelagic, mesopelagic, platypelagic, abyssopelagic, and hadalpelagic zones. The epipelagic zone consists of the surface waters uh, away from the uh, continental, sh continental shelf up to 200 meters below. The, the other zones are divided in terms of the depth. These depths are 
approximately depends on the continental shelf itself. Uh, the zones taking their names from the parts of the shelf. Also, there is the aphotic zone, which is uh, where light cannot penetrate anymore. Again, the depth of the aphotic zone, which is above the aphotic zone, is approximated and simplified and, and simplified uh, here uh, for presentation purposes. What I mean is, uh, it could vary from uh, different location to location. Okay, in the next lecture, we have the uh, general overview of the of our culture and the corresponding uh, engineering applications. Uh, thank you for listening. I will see you then.